friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa Springworks Workshop. Got a project here for us today. Hopefully it won't be too complicated, but it does look kind of ugly. At first glance, you don't think it looks too ugly. It's just a Takamini guitar. There's a close-up of the label in there. It is a uh, you know a combination acoustic electric instrument. There's the problem. <laughs> it's like somebody uh, wiped their uh, snotty nose all along the side. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, that's gross. I think it's a hot glue gun. That's what I would call that. Uh, let's just say it this way: don't use a hot glue gun on a guitar. Or any instrument as far as that goes they just hot glue guns and instruments don't go together it would be like putting mayonnaise on jello okay the story I heard was that it was sitting in a music stand like this and I believe it was at a school and I believe the wife if I'm not mistaken, was the teacher and borrowed this guitar from the husband, which apparently she had her own guitar, and so there must be a little bit of a riff there. <laughs> just just talking out loud here. I'm not sure. I, I may be reading between the lines. I'm not sure. But anyway, apparently uh, this guitar got taken to school when it perhaps shouldn't have got taken to school and uh, got knocked off the music stand and then apparently uh, the person that knocked it off tripped and stepped on it in addition so <laughs> there you go or kicked it or something anyway and then it was taken to apparently an, a, lo a local person that must work on some instruments or something and that's what they did to it uh, to stabilize it quote unquote <laughs> Well, I would have preferred it wasn't stabilized. <laughs> I, I would have preferred it came in in its raw form because now it's at least three times harder to fix. If, if not more than that, it's a lot harder to fix now. So I'm just going to uh, uh, de-string it to get rid of the tension because when I loosen all this up, perhaps the top could pull this area. I don't know. It's possible. So I'm just going to take all the tension off of it first. That's always a good idea regardless of what you're doing. Obviously these strings are going bye-bye. So I always loosen them up a little bit first so that there's no tension on them and then I just take a wire cutter and cut them off because ain't nobody got time to do all this unstringing stuff. I, I've never shown this in the video, not that it's important at all, but after I take all the old strings off, I just coil them up like this, wrap them together, and throw them in the trash can. Because if you throw them in the trash can without doing this, they come out of the trash can. They find their way, they can walk out of a trash can if you don't coil them up. Okay, it looks like uh, all these little pieces are falling out too. We may uh, work on that too. If these are loose, which they shouldn't be, but if they are that loose, eh, it's not too bad. It's a little bit loose, but that's not too bad really. We'll uh, work on all that part later, the setup. I'm trying to get it where you can see what I'm going to do in the camera. I'm actually, believe it or not, it looks scary, but I'm actually going to start with a chisel. I'm literally just going to be very careful and just get under the corner of the glue and try to lift it up. Because that's what we have to do. we got to get rid of this glue. And if you can get under the corner of it, this kind of glue will lift. It, you know, that hot glue gun stuff, it doesn't, I mean it sticks, but it doesn't stick. It's hard to define that exactly but it while it's adhered it sticks but it doesn't stick real hard and you can usually lift it up and get it out of the way but on camera that doesn't work and especially in this awkward position that I'm in so that you can see what I'm doing it never works I'm really trying not to let the uh, chisel touch the guitar really I'm just trying to just lift the glue you 
got a real problem right here on this edge where it's adhered to the edge of the crack. Um, you, I don't know if you can see it in the video, but this side is much lower than this. In other words, this is pushed in here and this is out here. So there's a big, you know, unevenness there. Well, if you can't work from one end, you try the other end. That end there seems to be stuck pretty tight, so I'm hoping we, up here where it's more level, maybe it'll lift better and come off better. And it's still not perfectly level here either, but it's better. There you go. See, now that's, that's what I was hoping it would happen. See how it lifted up there? And now if you can very carefully get a hold of that and wiggle it and just work very slowly, you might get lucky and get rid of all of it at once. It's kind of like taking off tape. Ah, it, you know, it broke on me. But I got a pretty good inch and a half there, and the end is loose here, so hopefully I can get under it again. So basically, this is just going to take a lot of time. That's really what it amounts to, to take this off. If we can get it off fairly clean like this, then I think we got a chance of putting this back together where it'll look a whole lot better. And definitely, get, hopefully, we can get it more even because it's not even here. It's, it's really not even anywhere. Just in a place or two, it's fairly even. Like right there, it's close, but it's, even there, it's not even. It's still, it's just too brittle. It's just... You've really got to be careful because, boy, you can go in with your chisel and just gouge the crap out of something like this. I'm not really pushing the chisel. I'm actually just getting it under the corner of the glue and I'm lifting up. I'm not really pushing the chisel at all. I think you can see the process. I just have to clean all that off and then I'll have to go back and detail these rougher spots and try to get the glue off of those too. So rather than bore you to death and eat up tons of video of me just doing this, I will uh, bring you back when I get a little closer because this is uh, going to take some time. Well 30 minutes or so later you can see I've got a lot of it cleaned up but where where the edges didn't match up the most that's where it's the hardest to clean off because it really stuck to the edges bad and there is some tear out of wood in places um, I don't know if you can see it very well but there's some chip out because the glue did stick to some little tiny slithers and those slithers just pulled out when you pull the glue off so here's the question should I ever use a hot snot gun on my guitar? Well, in case you haven't figured out the obvious answer, the answer is no! <laughs> I just saw this laying on the bench at, or on the table here. I don't know if you can see it yet. Let me put it in the palm of my hand. Can you see it there? It keeps falling out. It, it's camera shy. It doesn't want to stay there. But can you see that? That is the, a pearl dot. So I'm looking around, where's a pearl dot missing? And it's missing right here. So while I'm working on this, this fell out. So we'll fix that later too. And that holds a screw here, it's, or it's under a, that just covers a screw is what I should say. Well, bummer, this is really hard. And uh, I don't know, you know, if that would come off clean, I, then we'd have a good chance of making this repair look really good. But. I got news for you folks. This isn't going to look really, really good. If we can just make it good and flat and stable, I'll be tickled to death. I know a lot of folks are going to be asking me if I don't try it, why didn't you try heating up the glue and see if you could, you know, melt it loose? Well, I'm pretty sure that's just going to smear it and make it worse, but I'm going to give it a shot. You never know. That's helping. 
That's helping a little bit, I, th I would have to admit, I think, on these edges for sure. It's still going to tear out grain though, I can, I can tell, but it's so hot it's hard to work on it now though. Ouch. Kind of burns. It got rid of a lot of it. it. There's still a lot of residue, fine residue of it though. You got to be careful with that because you can see the finish starting to heat up. I think the finish heats up just before the glue completely turns to liquid. But it does soften the glue a lot. Yeah, you got to be really careful doing that because I can see the finish where it did mark the finish a little bit, but I think the finish is cooling back off and it's, it's going away. But if I'd have held it on there a few more seconds, I think we'd have had real trouble. This is broke across here in several places, and he put a real thin smear of that stuff right in here, and much harder to get off. Oh, another 30 minutes or so. I've got it, I would say, 95% gone, but the problem now is the hard part. The, you know, like it wasn't hard enough. It's hard to explain, but like this piece here, this piece here is laying over this piece here. So it's over the top. This piece here is laying over the top of this piece, so it's opposite. And the glue is back under the edges. Uh, until I get all of that glue out where I can open this sides and back. I'm going to have to be able to open this up and get in there and clean this out in order to line this back up and get it glued properly. So it's a big job yet. Um, just very simply said, had they not tried to fix it, it would have been a ten times easier job. The old saying is, work smarter, not harder. So I'm going to try this. I haven't tried it yet. I just took this to a grinder and ground, you know, a little tiny, kind of like a hook on the end there. But it's, you know, from the grinder, it's not perfectly flat and smooth. So now I'm going to lay it on the stone here and rub it around flat. Can you see the little tip there on the end? And I'm hoping I can get in these cracks and lift that glue out. This glue is right under these crack edges here. I'm going to put my hand in the guitar and see if there's any way to open this up yet. If I could start opening up the crack a little bit somehow, then we might be able to make some more progress. It doesn't appear like it wants to open up yet. thought you all might get a kick out of seeing what the inside of the guitar looks like where this crack is in here, and I'll try to hold the camera still. You can see there's not much in there. There's a lot of glue run down right there, but I don't think that's the same kind of glue. I think that's from something else, I would think. Unless he tried to put a different kind of glue in there first. And that might be what has the crack glued together, although that does kind of look like it there. So maybe it's not hot glue, maybe it is some other kind of glue, but it, it sure does look like hot glue. But I don't see the crack all the way in there, and that's the what I'm at. my issue is, I don't actually see the crack anywhere else, it's just on the outside. I think a lot of the crack is behind this tall kerfing. It's got very tall kerfing. The kerfing's about an inch tall. 
So a lot of the crack may be behind the kerfing, which is kind of weird. You wouldn't think that would be the case. So it just gets harder, really. It doesn't get any easier. I'm just going to keep working on this. Hopefully I can get it broke loose where I can get this these sides lined up because they're not at all lined up. I don't know if you can see that, but this is much higher. I mean, you know, you could, it's just, you can catch your finger on that. It's, it's just not lined up at all. And we got to get it lined up in order for it to, any hope of making it look better and, and uh, being solid, you know. So I'm going to continue to work on that some here and see what I can come up with. I have a feeling though if if this glue did get down in the crack and ran down and restuck itself to the kerfing, I kind of think we're done. I don't think this is going to get fixed, unfortunately. It may just look a little better because all that glue's off of there, but I'm kind of thinking we might be done. So I hope not, but I'm going to I'm going to get in here and see if I can come up with anything else. Because I can tell you for sure the kerfing is really wide on this guitar. After another, oh, 15 minutes of studying this, here's the best I can come up with. By feel, when I feel inside there, I don't feel this crack at all. I feel the kerfing is in that area. By look, it looks like the kerfing's covering this. By measurement, I would say it couldn't cover it. So I don't know how to explain that, but it does look like it's covered by the kerfing inside, the best I can tell. I have taken the fleshy part of my finger. I'm not using my fingernails, by the way, and I don't have much fingernails anyway, but I tap and I don't hear anything loose there. It appears to be solid to the kerfing which sucks because I don't know any way to get that loose without just brute force and just breaking something. So the only option that I can think of at the moment, and it's kind of a hack job, and I don't like it because it's a hack job, is to just, you know, seal what I can with super glue, CA glue, and, you know, seal it as best I can with that, which I'm sure we'll get in there and glue anything that's not glued. Then just literally bevel these edges together. Literally bevel them together as close as I can get them together. And they're not that close right now, so it's going to take some work. But do some beveling there and some fill and some beveling and some staining and stuff. And it'll be somewhat better than it was, but... It just won't be invisible by any stretch. And uh, that's about all I can come up with. So I'm going to talk to the customer and see if that's an option they want to do or if they just want to leave it rough like this without the glue mess on there. And I can darken in these white spots where it won't show as bad. Um, that's an option. So those are the only two options I can come up with at the moment because I don't think I'm going to get this loose. I talked to the customer about this problem, uh, explaining that the only two options I can see is one, just leave it like it is right now, darken up the roughness here, and you know, it's really jagged though. I mean, it's just bad. I don't like that, but you know, you could darken it up and it, it wouldn't be quite as visible, at least it wasn't as, it's not as visible already as it was with all that extra glue on there. The other option is, and it's hackery, I'll admit. I, I don't like it. The other option is just to sand it as smooth as I can get it to go, fill it and seal it with the CA glue as much as I can. And you know, if I have to refinish a little bit of it or whatever, and then just buff it out as much as I can and just call it good. You know, it's gonna be uneven, it's gonna be wavy, it's just gonna be that way. But I can't get it apart. I you know, I put my hand in here and pulled up on the top. I, tapped that kind of beat on this part here to see if it would come loose. If there's anything loose, I can't get anything to move around the edges at all with my fingers on pressure. Uh, so it's somehow glued to the, to that back to that kerfing, I suppose. It's a shame that, that it had to break up inside of the kerfing. You wouldn't think it would have done that. I mean, it just doesn't even really make sense, but it apparently did because I don't see it on the inside. The only other possibility, and I guess this is a possibility, and I'm going to look at that and see if I can tell. 
is that maybe it's a plywood veneer. No, I don't know. Is that a possibility? I'm looking at the edge here, trying to look at the grain and see if I can see that same grain on the outside. And I gotta tell you, it looks similar, but from what I can see, it doesn't look identical. Looks more identical on this side. I'd say it's solid wood based on what I'm seeing here on this side. It looks like these green lines that I can see here going through, go through on the inside. So it looks like it's solid wood. And from what I can tell from the edges, I would have guessed it was solid wood. But if it's not, if it's a laminate, then that would be, that would explain why maybe I can't see it on the inside. It didn't break on the inside. I can't explain it. I, I can't see the crack on the inside and it looks like I, by measurement, it looks like I should be able to see it. But I can't see it. Let me look back here. This crack back all the way at the very back. I didn't look back there. And let's see if I can see that crack because it's down low enough. It can't be in the curtain. There's the back of it back there. There's no crack. So it is got to be a plywood. It has to be. Because I am definitely in the right area. There's the tail block. And this is only about two, two and a half inches from the tail block. So there's the tail block right there. There's the center. And I'm on the right side here. And there is no damage at all to that area. So it had to be... Now up on the top up there, I have to admit up on the top, it does look like there's damage up here. I see that crack. But down here, there's no damage, and there's another crack there. Wow, that is weird. Folks, it just gets weirder. And you can see how the crack disappears up into the kerfing there, or it goes up into the edge of the kerfing there. Actually, it's... Now that I look at it this way, it's still below the kerfing there in most places. But that's just glue run out. That's what it is. So whatever glue he used, glued it back to the kerfing, because in this area here, it's above the kerfing. The crack is above the kerfing for sure. So that explains it. It definitely glued it back to the kerfing. I still can't explain why I don't see this crack here, in this area here, because it's unlevel, it's a crack. I don't see why I don't see this crack down on the inside. I see the big crack on the inside, I don't know. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Pretty much guarantee that it is glued back to the kerf, so we're not going to get it apart. So with that knowledge, the customer told me to do what I would do if it was my guitar. I get that a lot, actually. Just do what you would do if it was your guitar. Well, that puts all the weight on my shoulders. <laughs> What I would do at this point, if it was my guitar, is just level it the best I can, seal it the best I can, and call it good. And, you know, try to smooth it out and make it look as good as I can make it look, but it's going to be a hack job. It's just, you know, you can only do what you can do. When I thought I had the camera on, I was bragging on this sandpaper. I get nothing out of this. Lowe's doesn't even know I'm saying this, but you can see it says sold only at Lowe's. It's made by 3M. It's called Sand Blaster Pro. If you have much sanding to do, go buy this. It's the best sandpaper there is. I've tried them all. There's nothing that compares to this. Now, there, 3M probably makes this under another name, and it, and it would compare, obviously, but this is the only way I know to get it. 
It's sold at Lowe's, Sandblaster Pro. Go get it, you'll love it. See, even after all that sanding, look at that, there's not a bit of buildup on that sandpaper at all. You just wipe it, I just wipe it on my carpet here, do that, and it's that clean. It's amazing stuff. Well, I gotta tell you something, I didn't expect it to feel that smooth, but that actually doesn't feel too bad. A little bit down in here, it's a little rough, but right in here, it's pretty darn good. Up here, a little bit rough, because that's where it was about the worst, right there. But it's not bad. It's, it's just, you know, you just want it to be better, but it's, it's not really bad, considering how bad it was. Okay, it looks worse than horrible. Yeah, I know that. Um, you know, I had to sand it down to bare wood in a lot of places. It's here, this is still high, big time. You can feel feel it, but man, that was off by a full 16th of an inch. I, and that's a lot of sanding, trust me. So it's better, but now the edges are getting very thin and jaggedy. So what I'm gonna to try to do now is, is put the CA glue in these edges and these cracks and try to seal up the, the wood itself and you know let that glue get down in these cracks and glue everything back together. Well, anyway, I thought I had the camera on. So I've been putting glue in these cracks and I'm basically wanting to stabilize these feather edges because you know where I sanded this down these wooden edges got very very thin so I want to stabilize those so that they don't break off and I'm having to go from different angles because like I said it, it's high in one place and high in another and I don't want this stuff to turn white on me so I'm giving it a few minutes here or a few seconds to dry but yet it just keeps running out. It doesn't dry completely. So this here finally gets it to, to set up and that's what I need. I need it to set up. I will tell you this, after the second sanding, if you're only going by feel, this is not horrible. It, it actually feels pretty good most of this way around here. This is pretty bad because it's just way out of level right here. It's a little out of level right here, but not too bad compared to this. This is pretty bad right here. But, you know, considering where we were when it got here, the hack job that had already been done to it, this hack job that I'm doing is, uh, you know, a vast improvement. You know, I'm calling it a hack job, but the truth is the hack job was done before it got here. So, you know, you, you can only do what you can do. I think it's sealed pretty good. I don't feel any, uh, you know, jagged edges of wood now. Where I, That's what I was feeling before, it was just jagged edges of wood everywhere. I found some 400 of the same kind of sandpaper. I don't know, this video seems to be the one where I can't remember to turn the camera on. But uh, I just took some of my Phoebe's Brown Leather Dye, dark brown, wiped it on there, and um, you know, it's close, but I think it needs to be just a tiny bit darker. Uh, so I need to put like a drop of black in with the brown, and I'm gonna try that next. I poured some dark brown into a little container, then I dipped this into the dark black and uh, mixed it, then mixed it around into brown. So I'm going to see what this does. I think it's going to be pretty close. That looks good to me. It looks better than it did. And I'm trying to get down into the cracks and crevices where it needs to be.
I know it looks kind of bad in the video because it looks kind of whitey cloudy, but I think that's going to go away when I put some finish on this. I really feel like I've got it about as close to matching and, and repaired as I can get it. I'm going to bring it down here where I have fairly good control over this. I've got a clean rag. I'm wiping this all dry with this rag to get rid of any extra dust. And uh, now I'm going to take this uh, Minwax Lacquer Sanding Sealer is what it is. I've shook it up real good here. It may should maybe I shouldn't have done that because it's kind of gotten foamy. I'm going to uh, apply this just kind of over this whole area and just see what happens. I'm going over a much bigger area than the repair area because I want to be able to sand and buff this out and blend it. Up. Sometimes you got to know when to quit, so I think I'm going to quit right there for now. It's going to need a couple more coats of that. I let the finish dry overnight. There was little holes in places that you would expect, like always. And so I filled those with uh, CA glue. Now I'm going to go back through and scrape off the high spots on those fills. And you know, if this was a flat surface, I would take a single edge razor blade and put tape on both sides and scrape it that way but this is not flat it's kind of rolling like and so I'm going to try using my exacto uh, knife exacto blade with this curve here so I can just touch the tops of the high spots The blade didn't seem as sharp as I thought it should be, so I sharpened it on my uh, whetstone there, and it's really sharp now, and so I'm going to try scraping with that. I think that'll do better. Saved some of my dye from yesterday, and of course it dried up pretty much, but I, it's uh, soluble in alcohol, so I just put a few drops of alcohol in here, and I think it's going to be roughly the same color I had, which I thought was pretty close overall. Not perfect, but it's hard to match stain. Really hard, hard, hard to match stain. Yeah, well, there's a what it's starting to look like. You know, it ain't perfect, but it sure is a lot better than it was. So uh, we're gonna let that dry for a half hour or so and put some more on there. I'm gonna put several coats of that on here, and then we'll hopefully be able to buff it out and make it look pretty good. Well, that's after four coats and a couple of applications of uh, stain. You know, it's really pretty good. It's, you know, it's not perfect, especially as uneven as everything was. I'm amazed it came out as good as it did. Uh, you got to work with what you got. I've got some 1500 here, very, and, and it's wet or dry, and I've got it wet. And I'm just going to very lightly uh, try to level. I'm not, I'm really not trying to remove much. Just knock out a few of the little brush strokes and things. We'll take it to the buffing wheel and buff that out and see what that looks like. Well, that's what she looks like. It's a little more glossy than the rest of the instrument because the rest of the instrument is matte. But, uh, you know, I don't really know how to get a matte finish doing it with the techniques I've done there. It almost looked a little better when I left, left it sanded because it did match a little bit more. But, you know, considering the hot snot look, I'll take this over that any day. So... 
you know, it is what it is. I think the customer would be happy with it because he was just looking for a solid playable guitar and uh, he wasn't too concerned about the looks. So I think we're in pretty good shape for the money spent here. I think this is the best option. Now we're going to move on to looking at this bulge in the top. He uh, would like for me to see if there's anything I can do about that. To be honest, that's a very hard thing to fix. The bolts through here, which look like there's four, generally create those kinds of problems, in my opinion. Um, these bolts seem to, you know, they pull in those spots and they create a bulge. So I'm going to look in there and see if there's anything we can do to improve this. We're going to have a rather frank discussion here about uh, belly bulges. People are all the time concerned about them, and you should be, especially if there's, you know, something loose, bracing, wise, or anything in there. I've looked in this one, and to the best of my ability, there doesn't appear to be anything loose inside here. There is a pretty big belly bulge. Let's take this straight edge, we'll set it down right like this, and just for the sake of consistency, I have this 100 thousandths right here. So this is resting on top of the 100 thousandths. I have it right against the bridge. Um, now I'm going to take this, this is 90 thousandths here, and I'm gonna stick it under this side, and you can see that it does go under there. If I turn it over, it just barely goes under there because there is a little bit of a scallop here on this one side. So this is approximately a hundred thousandths also. And it just barely, barely goes under there. Okay, <clears throat> well, I see on YouTube all the time, I've seen several people say that humidification will fix those kinds of problems. Well, I've tried it dozens and dozens and dozens of times over the years. And yet, I don't think I've ever seen humidity fix that much. And even if it does change it, it's not a permanent change. Because, you know, it took, you know, however, however old this guitar is. Let's say it's 40 years old, 30 years old, 20 years old. It doesn't matter. But it took that many years for this to pull up. You're not going to fix that with humidity in five minutes or overnight, you know, and it's just not going to fix it. I'm sorry. And even if it does fix it, it took 20 years to pull it up there. It's going to pull back up. It Wood likes to go to the shape it likes to be in. Once it's gotten into a shape, it likes that shape and it stays in that shape. So you can humidify this all day long, I believe, and it's not going to change anything. Well, we've got a very accurate measurement here now. And we're going to humidify this. I'm going to let it set. It's 9.23 a.m. today. And up 24 hours later, we're going to check it and see if we see any change in this at all. Now, to add to the humidity, I'm going to put a bowl full of water with a sponge in there inside. I'm also going to take wet water. I'm going to take water and even wet down this top to give it an additional boost. I'll take a damp rag and wipe it down so it's got more moisture. In my opinion, all that's going to happen is, if anything, the bulge will probably get bigger. <laughs> I truly don't think the bulge is going to get smaller. But we'll measure it, and I'll give you the honest results. Uh, tomorrow, we'll give it 24 hours and see if we see any change whatsoever. If it's a good, positive change, you'll see that. If it's a negative change, you'll see that. If there's no change, you'll see that. I give you my honest word that it'll be an honest comparison and we'll see what happens. But in all the times I've ever done it in the past, I haven't seen anything positive come from humidification, especially on something like a belly bolt. You can see I've got this towel dampened down. It's pretty darn wet. It's, uh, I won't say water, I could wring it out and water will come out of it, I'm sure, but it's not dripping wet. It's, I, I wring it out a little bit just so it wouldn't just drip everywhere. I'm going to go behind the bridge plate and on the bridge plate itself even and I'm just going to try to dampen the wood in the top here as much as I can. Just wiping around. I might actually have to wet the rag down a couple more times to make sure that we're getting it good and wet. Okay, I've even got it wetter than the last time. It's really pretty wet, pretty damp. We're going to I'm going to go all the way across this top to try to get some moisture into this top. 
I'll come in front of the bridge plate here a little bit too. Keep in mind, this one has electronics in there, so I've got some wires to kind of feel around about. But anyway, I'm just kind of dampen, dampening everything I can dampen on this top inside there. Now we're going to put a bowl of water in there with a sponge, and, and I'm going to cover this top, I'm going to cover this hole with just something like this, just so that the moisture more or less stays in, doesn't have a choice. And we'll let it set overnight. I couldn't find a sponge, so I just took the same towel. It's very, very wet. There's water in the cup here, and I just kind of do that in case it would turn over. It doesn't just spill water everywhere. And we're going to set it down inside there. I'm going to set it back so that it's underneath this area. And then we're going to cover it like that and let it set overnight. This is just a side uh, note off of this video you're watching. And that is that I moved this strap button from here uh, on this Martin guitar. It belongs to the same customer that uh, the other guitar belongs to. And uh, anyway, while it was in here, I suggested that we move the strap button from here to here. And I'm still in the process of filling the hole here with some plastic so that it blends in and you won't be able to tell it. So that the fill's a little bit proud right now. But I mentioned to the customer, I said, you know, having the strap right here, the guitar can just fall forward and fall right off the strap. And he goes, yeah, that's happened to me a couple times. He said, but I've caught it, you know. And so here we go. Here's... Um, where I put the strap now, now as I've shown in other videos, now the strap will hang and, and go around the neck and even just holding it like that. I'm not doing anything special, but it balances the guitar and it doesn't fall forward, see? So you can see I'm just holding it by the strap buttons and it doesn't go forward. So that's a much more secure way. Plus the fact that it's wrapped around there, it's not going to turn loose. So your strap is literally wrapped around there and it's, it, it pulls it tighter to the guitar rather than looser. So anyway, there you go. There's your best tip of the day. Well, it's been 24 hours plus. Let's see if humidity did anything to this guitar. And truly, I don't know, have not checked it yet. I promise you, this, I'm checking it as you're seeing it right here. So here it is. I did have it in the other room and just brought it back exactly like you see it here. I set this little block of wood on there just to keep this cover in place so it wouldn't blow off. The uh, pan of water is here. We'll pull it out and you can see it's still completely soaking wet. And in case you have any doubts about that, let's just show you that it is soaking wet. See the water dripping out of it there? So there was plenty of water in there all night. And like I said, I don't know if it's going to do anything. It may have. I just haven't had any experience where that's been the case. So here's the 100 again. We'll set it right there, right on the edge where I had it before. I had this ruler on. I had a certain mark that I was using on that ruler. It was sitting just so that the ruler is exactly the same too. So the ruler was sitting just like that. I had this tight against the back of the uh, bridge there. And here's the 90. Does it still go under there? Yes or no? Yes, it does. No problem. Does the 100 and it still goes under there. So there's not been a bit of a change at all. Not not even a minor amount of change. It's exactly like it was. It's it was touching perfectly like that before in that area and it still is so it's exactly the same now that's after just 24 hours you might say oh it takes a lot longer than that well okay if it does it does but you know just how long are you supposed to wait my experience is and i've let them set for two weeks and i've never seen a bit of change i know on youtube videos you see change all the time and it makes a huge difference now, it might make a change on a crack. I'll admit that. On a crack, that's a different issue, though. But on something like this, a big hump, it's not going to fix it. You can humidify it. You can put this in a bathtub if you want to. And that might fix it because that's going to change everything. But, but that, you know, seriously, in all seriousness, it's not going to fix this problem. Okay, so how bad is this problem? Well, it's about a hundred thousandths, you know, from the high part here down to these low parts here. 
A hundred thousandths is less than an eighth of an inch. It's bad, it's not horrible, but when you put the string pressure on there, it's probably going to get worse. Well, I don't know what strings they've had on this guitar, but for sure, I would make sure I would always use light strings, custom light strings. I'm going to look inside again, just for sanity's sake, and just see if I can see any problems in there, you know, with the bracing. Well, I, I mean, technically I see a problem, but it's, it's, a, it's the way it was built. Um, I mean, it's got incredibly scallop bracing. The braces are scalloped incredibly low back in through here. Well, that's going to, you know, soften it and it's going to make it pull up. But honestly, I don't see anything construction-wise that's a problem. The bridge plate looks tight. The braces behind there look good. The X bracing looks good. I don't see a single problem. It looks as clean as it can possibly look. I just don't see a problem. So, should we try to fix this? Well, my recommendation is not right now. If the bridge was loose, then maybe. And let's double check that just as a sanity check and make sure that the bridge is not loose. So we'll take this piece of typing paper here and we'll slide it around. And generally speaking, the typing paper will go right under there if there's a problem. And there, there does not appear to be even the slightest bit of a problem. And by eye, I don't see a gap. I don't see any kind of a, a weakness there. So would I fix this if it were mine? My answer is no, I wouldn't. I'd leave it like this for now. I'd definitely make sure I put light strings on it, and I'd watch it to see if it's getting worse. But otherwise, I'd leave it just like it is. And let's see. We're going to go ahead and set it up and see how it turns out. I was making a new nut for this guitar to set it up and I've got a piece of antler here. Now you will notice that the antler falls down in the crack right here, no problem. And it won't go in the crack on this side. And you think, well, maybe your antler's not accurate, right? So it goes in perfectly there, but not so much here, as you can see, I think. So if that's the case, well then if I turn this around, then it you know, we should have a different result, right? Same result. So, obviously the antler, you know, it goes down in fine right there. So obviously the antler is the same size, but this slot is not. This slot is tighter on this side than it is over here. So, how do you fix that? The first thing I want to do is make sure there's no glue or something else in the slot that would be causing the problem. So I'll take this very sharp chisel and I'll rub it down the face end of the fretboard here. I don't see anything coming off. It feels pretty good. It looks clean. And I'll kind of do the same here to the peg head overlay side and see if I can get anything off of there. So I tried to scrape just a little bit off of it there. And it's almost going down in, but you'd have to force it really hard. And I don't like to force them that hard. So I'm just going to take this file and see if I can just kind of work it on that end over there. Now it's kind of rocking a little bit more towards the middle, so there must be a little bit of something hanging up towards the middle here. Yeah, I think that did it. I think it's perfectly tight. Now it's snug, doesn't move at all, and uh, fits really, really good. I turn them over with a very sharp pencil and I scribe the neck on the nut. And basically, the instant the pencil mark goes away, you're at the exact right size when you. So I take it over to my sander and I just hold it against the sander till that pencil mark goes away on both sides and just the instant that it goes away on both sides the, the bottom and the back side then it's going to fit this just perfectly we're just checking the action on this now I got the strings on it I know the actions high
But uh, it's got the original bridge on here. I didn't change this. This is bone, and I didn't see any point changing it out to antler. It's a two-piece setup also, which would have taken longer with the antler. So I just figure, you know, you're not going to get much bang for your buck there going from bone to antler. Okay, so here's the 90. It's way high of that. Here's uh, 100. It's way high of that. Here's 115 getting close but it seems high of that even so here's here's 120 and actually that's pretty close but it's still high there's 130 right on the nose so it's really high it's at 130 right here on the on the base uh, base E string right on the money it's 130 so we got that now let's go over on the other side and see where we're at well 90 is it's definitely high of 90 Here's 100, getting close. Here's 115. Yep, I think that might be it. So on this side, we're not quite as high. We got it 115 to 130. So there's where we're at. Let's do the math and see what we've got to reduce it. Okay, we're at 130 on this side, 115 on this side. We want this, I want this down to 80, I want this down to 90. So this, uh, that means this is 40 thousandths high here. We have to double that because it's the distance here. So we have to take 80 thousandths off the saddle back here on this side. And on this one, we have to take off um, 70 thousandths on this to reduce it 35 thousandths here. Now, that's simple on a normal saddle. This one's complicated because it's a two-piece saddle, as you can see. So we're just going to do the best we can. Uh, it'll be a little less off of these middle ones, I believe. Let me just double check that. It's really kind of complicated here. We'll just have to kind of do it by eye, but we'll take a little less off this than on this side. So that's just the way it is. Um, we'll just have to get after it here and give, give it a shot. Well, I feel pretty sure that the customer is going to like this because the action is really nice and low. It's about 75 thousandths crust. Here's what we ended up. What uh, It got a little lower because I had the nut a little higher than I thought I did when I started on this. But it doesn't buzz. It plays real good. And that's what he was looking for is a good playing guitar. This thing ought to be a, a miracle to him compared to where it used to be because it was gigantically high. That crazy high uh, saddle that was on here is a contributing factor to that hump too. The higher that is, the bigger the lever that it's making and the more it's going to pull and twist that bridge up like that. So I'm glad we, you know, put got this all lowered down and everything and that's going to change the stress up here a lot. So it's not going to be nearly as stressed as it used to be and with the lighter strings and everything, I doubt he's going to have any further problem with the bulge. Although, you know, you never know, time will tell. Well, I'm pretty proud of the way this turned out. You can see there the repair that was just horrific is not that noticeable now. You can see it. I ain't going to lie to you about that, but it's not nearly like it did look. And the action, I doubt seriously the action's ever been this low on this guitar, so he ought to be in love with this thing. Got the new antler nut up here, and, uh, you know, it plays like a dream up here, too, so... Just play a few chords on her. I can't do too much more than that. Unfaithful one, you'll have to suffer. You're doomed to go through life alone. For no one else will ever trust you. They'll know your heart is made of stone. Well, that's what she sounds like. Pretty good guitar. Considering the way it came in, I don't think it could be a whole lot better. Thank you very much for watching. Tell your friends.